So without further ado, let's jump into our Adobe Lightroom tutorial. Okay, so we're going to jump into uh, the tutorial here. We've got some landscape images. Some of them are already color graded. We'll just go here and have a look at our flagged ones. We've, I've already picked out the best photographs from what I got at Sandy Cove. As you see, I've color graded some of them already and I've actually uploaded them. So these ones are available for printing and framing or whatever. I'm just going to show you how I edit these photos to be so clean and so beautiful. So we're going to jump into a photo here that has not been edited yet. I know it looks really nice in it, but it hasn't been edited yet. I think we can make this better. So the first thing to do, um, as I've probably already done, this is the original. So when you got a, the sun, you can't see it. As you can see, it's all blown out. This part here looks nice, nice and color toned. What you got to do is you got the highlights bar here. You got to bring them down, bring the highlights down. And you bring the sun back into your photo. Alright. That's the first thing I recommend for doing landscape photographs. If you're taking a photo and your sky is blown out, don't worry. Shoot in raw format if you can. And when you get it after it, you'll bring all the colours back down. Okay. Next step, simple steps. Bring the vibrance up. Now this is going to bring... The color in right so you don't want to go too far here okay so what you're going to do is slowly bring it up keep your eye on it try keep it looking realistic and it looks a little bit fake there doesn't it so bring it back down don't want to have it too fake for me it looks a little bit orange and um, so orange is the opposite of blue for anyone who doesn't know the color wheel for some reason i do but orange is the opposite of blue so what you got to do is you got to bring the blues in higher. All right, see that there? Looks more natural now. That's more what it looks like to eye. So that looks much more natural there. Similar with green and purple, you can alternate between the two. Obviously, you don't want to go too far there. You want to have it nice in the middle, so all good there. So back to the vibrance tool. Now a lot of people make a mistake here. Right, I'm going to put the vibrance tool back to zero. A lot of people use saturation tool. Saturation tool is similar, but it's not as good as the vibrance tool. And I'm going to tell you why. Saturation saturates everything in the photo. Okay? When you put that up, it's saturating everything in the photo. Whereas with the vibrance tool, as a smart tool. It's a variation of the saturation tool. And bringing this up will only saturate parts that are not already fully saturated. So therefore, this smart tool is the best thing to use for lighting your color colors in your photo, making the colors pop, making the colors stand out. All right, I'm gonna lower it down a little bit. I don't wanna have it too uh, too colorful. Okay, so that's probably looking good at the moment. What I do like to do is add a bit of a vignette. So as you can see here around the corners, I'm gonna show you now. See around the corners here and the edges are getting a bit dark. Sort of puts a little circle. I'm going to show you. That's it fully. You don't want to go too much. I like to put a little bit of vignette on that. Yeah. Looks lovely. Okay. Perfect. So I'm not going to overdo this. You can go into the color wheels here. Start getting crazy. Doing orange and tails. You know. You can get some different styles. A little bit like a painting. You know. You can obviously go for different styles here. Maybe I'll just add a little bit more blue to that. Yeah, look at the orange and teal. Yeah, a little bit of blue um, into the mid-tones there. So, don't want to overdo it. Don't want to overdo it. Um, obviously, we don't want to have too much blue. We're losing our whites there in the background. See, look at the houses there. We've got blue houses. We've got pink houses. We've got everything. So, we're all good there. So, I'm pretty happy with that. So, that's obviously one photo, but what you can do here, this is a Lightroom, Adobe Lightroom. This is an easy tool. You can copy this, all of these settings that i just done. We head to the next photo. Okay, yeah, great photo. But we can always add our template preset from the last photo onto the new one. And we've got a whole different story. If you look at this picture here, it looks amazing. But even before the edit, you know... It still looks good. 
so there you are there it's a lot more orange in that one but with color grading you can do a lot more and you can stamp your own authority on the photo the way you see it and the way you would like it i'm going to do one more photo and demonstrate it okay here's a selection of photos these actually haven't been color graded yet but they look amazing already and um, not gonna lie they do look really good so look let's pick this one here okay a little bit dark this one a little bit dark so what i'm going to do is i'm going to boost the exposure okay you can do this in your camera when you're there but you can also do it after make sure to shoot in raw format if you can if you can that's the best format to shoot in okay especially photos okay and video okay and straight in here we've got boosted exposure let's bring our highlights down a little bit get them clouds back don't want to go too much don't want to go too much nice that's nice and solid there a little bit of more blue take the tint orange tint away from the sky let's boost our saturation okay now it's going a little bit false here and what you can do is it's false around here a little bit too orange in the sky that sky doesn't look that orange so you got to bring the blues back into it okay okay and i'm seeing a little bit of purple so it's like very purple actually and obviously the opposite of purple is green so you gotta bring a little bit of green into it bring a little bit of green into it and it's bringing much more natural tones to the color all right see that there see that there okay i'm gonna boost the exposure a bit more so you can actually see this photograph and um, for cropping cropping's nice and good you can i think for this you know we'll keep we'll keep a regular ratio so we'll go to a four to three ratio and we'll just make it a little bit taller a little bit shorter you know we can always revert back if we don't like it and go back to the widescreen obviously we can go freehand with the crop this is a little bit more difficult when you're printing but you can obviously bring it down here and you've got yourself a panoramic view photo so you can always play around with the crop crop is really important framing is really important especially when you're taking the photo but if you don't get the framing right you can just adjust it afterwards and just make sure that you're happy totally happy with that so play around with the crop play around with the shape of your photo and try to get your line straight and see across here nice and straight if it isn't straightened you know you can always straighten it after okay you're not going to be able to get every photograph perfect so that's why we use editing to fix them after so again not going to touch the hdr and not going to touch any of the color wheels here you know you can do a lot with them you can add some orange nice orange tones to the sky here you know we might add a little bit of orange there you know so that's pretty happy with that that's looking really nice I'm gonna show you the before and after so here it is before on the left and here it is after much more brighter that's much more what it was actually like because it wasn't that dark it was actually still fully bright at the time so that's much more what I want okay okay moving on to the final step okay this is really important exporting this photo okay this photo is done it's cooked it's been in the oven it's ready to ready to come out of the oven and go on online show your friends everything like that you got to go up to export now you do not want to screenshot this ever even if you're on your phone you don't want to screenshot because when you screenshot something it loses its quality you got to export it normally like um right from the the software you don't want to screenshot things because every time you screenshot something it's going to lose its quality so i'm just going to set folder for this saying sandy cove image okay little folder save that simple in you go select the folder you gotta select the name okay have a name in there already okay i'm gonna put in video tutorial okay you ready moving down you're gonna save this in jpeg or png they're the best standard for social media and website a lot of the times jpeg is the best make sure to select 100 quality 100 percent quality if it's for online purposes srgb is the best color space 
Also, you want to sharpen for screen, not for paper, unless you are printing it, which is going to you have to be redone for that. Okay, go in here, add the watermark. So, if you create your own watermark, see there, I have my Ryan for Cyber Photography. Create your own water watermark and make sure to mark your photos so people don't steal them. You know, people are going to steal them. Put them as their wallpaper on their phone and they're never going to pay a cent. So make sure to put your um, signature on them because they're your work at work and you know you want everyone to know it's yours. Alright, so put the signature on there, save that. Okay, got everything right here. We're saving as a JPEG 100% and you got to save. Export. Okay, and that's done. That's how I edit my landscape photos. Sometimes I do variations, not going to be the same thing every time, but that's basically my layout of how I edit my photos. All right. Thank you for all for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. And don't forget, use your vibrance tool, boost the exposure, bring your highlights down, and your sunsets and sunrise will look amazing.